Hi, this is Dr. S, and this is video four of my module on aromatic chemistry for OCR A level year 13. At the end of the last video, I looked at these two structures and we said that these structures actually both represent the same compound, they're both representations of benzene. But this one appears to be an aliphatic, alicyclic version, and this one appears to be aromatic. Now these two versions, this is called the Kekulé model of benzene and this is the delocalized model of benzene. So we're going to look at the differences between the two and have a bit of a recap on year 12 bonding at the same time. So before we go into the bonding of Kekulé and delocalized models, I'd like to go back to year 12 when we were looking at how alkenes are formed, what I'd like to do is to draw this out in front of you and then try and complete it to show how a double bond is formed between the two carbons. You can pause the video and come back when you're ready. Okay, thank you. So what you should remember from year 12 is that when we have a double bond, the carbons have three sigma bonds attached already. That means there is a spare p orbital on each carbon, which can overlap. The p orbitals can overlap to form a pi bond. And the pi bond, what's that, this? Overlap above and below the sigma bond. That is a pi bond. That's what a double bond is. Now if we go back to our structures here, our Kekulé and delocalized models, you can see that the Kekulé structure seems to have three double bonds around it. So if I compare what I've just drawn there with the double bond to a situation where I have three double bonds in a ring, you can see that here, the Kekulé model would have three double bonds between the alternating sets of carbons. Now the delocalized model of benzene says something slightly different. To show the delocalized model of benzene, what I'm going to do is draw the p orbitals on each of these carbons. There is a hydrogen on each of these carbons as well, but I've omitted it for clarity. There are three sigma bonds on each one which means there is now a spare p orbital on each of the carbons. Now in the delocalized model, all of these p orbitals can overlap. So it's still a p orbital overlap. But this time it's not just between two adjacent carbons, it's actually all six carbons that overlap between here, between there, between there, 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 and there. And similarly between the bottom lobes of the orbitals as well, like that. And how that then appears, it's quite hard to draw on here, but it's almost like a donut shaped pie system above and below the ring. It's quite hard to draw two dimensionally. But we now call that a pie system, sometimes called a pi cloud. You should be able to see that the, the orbitals overlap all the way around the ring, above and below the plane. So the significant differences between the delocalized model that I've just drawn there and the Kekulé model, which is at the bottom, is the level of overlap between the p orbitals. So let's look at each one and think about what the differences may be. In the Kekulé model here, effectively what we've got is a double bond followed by a single bond followed by a double bond followed by a single bond. Whereas in the delocalized model, that's not true. In the Kekulé model, the double bonds would be shorter than the single bonds. So actually the 
hexagon would be a bit lopsided. But in the delocalized model, there is no such thing like that because the electrons are distributed equally. Effectively, what the delocalized model is saying is that you have your six carbons, and there's almost like a half bond between each one. So I've drawn it dotted to show it's a half bond. It's so it's like one and a half bonds. It's not a single bond, it's not a double bond, it's kind of like one and a half. And how we represent that is with the circle. You can see where that circle's come from now. So that circle represents the p orbital overlap over all of the carbons in that ring. Now there are a few bits of evidence that point to the fact that the delocalized model is a better model than the calculate model. So let's look at those pieces of evidence. The first one is that double bonds are reactive to electrophilic addition. So reaction with bromine, for example. So the Kekulé structure here has double bonds which would react. Actually, the delocalized model doesn't really have a double bond. So it doesn't have enough electron density to react with bromine. Let's try and look at why that is. In each of these localized double bonds, there are two pi electrons. There's two pi electrons here, two pi electrons here, and two pi electrons here. They are localized between two carbons, so it has quite a high electron density. The pi system has six pi electrons, but they're spread out over six carbons. So effectively, between each one, there's only one pi electron. So that's a lower electron density than the Kekulé structure. A low electron density. This would explain why benzene does not react with bromine. We will look at how benzene reacts with bromines in future videos. But it needs a catalyst in order to do so. It will not react with bromine on its own. The Kekulé model would react with bromine. So that's one piece of evidence to support the delocalized model. Does not react with bromine or any other similar electrophilic addition reaction. Another piece of evidence is, as I said, this would be alternating double single, double, single bonds. So the bond lengths would be different. The, sh the double bond would be shorter, single bond would be longer. But evidence has come out with benzene that suggests that all of the bond lengths and all the bond angles are equal. And the bond length is somewhere between a single carbon to carbon bond and a double carbon to carbon bond. So that is another piece of evidence that backs up the delocalized structure compared to the Kekulé structure. There's one more piece of evidence. You would be able to hydrogenate this structure. You'd be able to add hydrogens across the double bonds. Now there is an enthalpy of hydrogenation for this. Each time you hydrogenate a double carbon to carbon bond, it releases 120 kilojoules per mole. So if there were three double bonds, then we would expect the enthalpy of hydrogenation to be minus 360 kilojoules per mole. Because that's times three. Now actually, that does not happen with benzene. It is significantly less than that. I think it's about minus 208. And that extra energy that would have been released is known as the
delocalization and stability. Okay, so there are three pieces of evidence that back up why benzene should be referred to as the delocalized model. It doesn't react with bromine, whereas the Kekulé structure would. It has equal bond lengths and angles, whereas the Kekulé structure wouldn't. And has an extra level of stability, proven by the fact that the enthalpy of hydrogenation of benzene is actually less exothermic than it would be if it was referred to as three individual double bonds. My next video will concentrate on how we name compounds that have benzene rings in them. I'll see you then.